You know, I've been told I've gone bananas, <laughs> but they have no idea how far. Every single day I'm gonna make something great Hey guys, Ron here with BBM Reptiles. If you're new to the channel and I didn't freak you out with the intro, thank you for sticking around and hit that subscribe button. Lord knows I can use all the subscribers I can get. My last channel was basically largely based on family subscribers with the hope of actually seeing me getting bitten in one of my videos by my snakes. Since that didn't, since that didn't happen, I had to start up a new channel. You know I lost those subscribers. So subscribe guys. It's not about snake bites, it's actually about ball pythons, this incredible hobby, and everything that new that's coming out in each and every season. Well, anyway, in this video, I actually wanted to go over the banana gene. Now, the banana gene is definitely one of my favorite genes, um, I would say, since I started in ball pythons. And I know I said that a lot, but I have to be real honest. The banana is one of those genes that's an icebreaker for a lot of people who are real, real um, afraid or intimidated by snakes in general. Ball python has the benefits of having so many different combinations and mutations that there's always a color that's very appealing even to those most that are, are more timid or are intimidated by snakes. Now here I have a banana black pastel enchi and this snake actually, believe it or not, is the ambassador here in my house. Um, this is the snake actually that I won over my wife five years ago when I first started with the ball pythons. At that time, she didn't want anything to do with snakes and basically the mere, the mere um, presentation or me pulling one out just freaked her out until I got this snake, this banana black pastel enchi. And I actually gave it to her to win her over um, just basically to get her more um, into my side of what the ball python hobby is actually about. And the colors, when it was a hatching, was so bright and it was so incredible. She didn't actually believe a, a ball python, or even a snake can actually reach those colors. And that's the incredible thing about ball pythons. The array of mutations and combinations that are able to be unlocked each season is one of the main reasons why so many people are new and keep actually inspired within the hobby um, despite the years. Now, I know the banana gene basically, well, let me put this guy around my neck because he's kind of a little bit fidgy. I know the banana gene basically has had a bad rap for actually being that, multi, that, that ball python mutation that actually crashed the market. But it's further from the truth because basically ball pythons, it was a point when they first started, they reached record highs. As a matter of fact, the ball python, in the single gene alone, actually has the record of all ball pythons of a cold dominant to actually maintain the highest value. At one time, they were actually going as far as um, fifty dollars to $60,000, and even more than that, I can imagine. But they were basically the most sought-after snake or mutation in the beginning um, when they actually came out. The only problem was, at that time, well, let me get this guy around. At that time, the only ball pythons that were available were females and the males that were actually um, available, they were only producing males, I mean females, I'm sorry. At that time, um, it wasn't actually a general knowledge about why that was happening and finding out basically during, during um, various seasons that um, the ball python banana gene is sex linked. Now, what I mean by sex linked basically is that the males are known as male makers mostly because or offsprings that they produce that carries the banana genes will be mainly males. And it's very, very rare when they actually get the chance to produce, produce a female. Now, if I have a female banana, well, that female banana can actually produce both genes or actually both sexes. They can both produce the male and they can also produce the females. Now, the male that comes from a female banana, that in turn becomes a female maker. It's a little bit complicated actually when you try to break it down to understand it, but as you go through the season, you'll more or less get an idea. 
In this video, I'm gonna actually show you some of my collections that I have in banana, and you get the term why I actually said that. A lot of people actually said that I went a little bit bananas because I kept pushing this gene. The reason why I kept pushing this gene is because, oh, let's get this guy a little bit more situated. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris, I'm not trying to actually imitate you putting the snake around your neck, but I'm trying to figure that basically I could probably keep this snake a little bit more um, docile while I actually talk. Not even docile, but a little more manageable. Just in case if you're wondering, everyone we know we're talking about Chris Hardwick. Um, he has a great YouTube channel. Um, he doesn't need any introduction. I mean, like the guy is incredible in all the content that he's pushing out. So <laughs> I don't want to sound or even look like I'm imitating when I'm putting the snake around my neck. But anyway, going back to the banana jeans, like I said, being at sex length, the, the banana actually, it has a point that when it produces the offsprings, um, let's say this one, as a matter of fact, like I said, this male, I had him since 2015 and I bred him to, I would say at least 20 females in the time that I had him with me. Within those years and within those seasons of breeding with 20 different females, I produce, and I'm not kidding with you, I produce over 70 different banana ball python combos. And out of those 70, I was only fortunate enough to produce two. And one just as recent as this season, um, in the videos, in one of my earlier videos, um, I show a breakdown of some of my um, banana ball pythons. In there, I have one of the females that I actually produced. It wasn't from this one, it was actually from one of his sons that was able to produce a female banana. But it's that hard and that complicated when you're working with the banana gene, especially when it's, a, when it's sex linked and you have a male banana. Now, I do have a female banana that I'm gonna show a little bit later, but I, I just basically wanna talk about how incredible this gene is. Like I said, and I said this so many times, I've actually lived that experience. The banana, it's kind of an icebreaker gene for a snake for a lot of people when they're starting out in the hobby or, or actually being introduced into the reptile um, community because of its colors. Now this um, male actually, he is kind of darkened out because of, um, I guess, aging actually. But you can see he still basically has his freckles that actually came out um, actually as they age. When they actually come out younger, you won't see those freckles actually come out, but they do actually come out more when they age um, a little bit more. And this this guy up here, like I said, he's from 2015. We're talking about he's a four-year-old male, and he's been a, through a lot of breeding seasons. Um, to think, like I said, it's been 20 females actually that I actually use this ball python or this banana gene to produce so many incredible combos. Now, what I actually want to see in the future with this now that I finally do have a female banana in my collection, which is breeding, um, that female actually is gonna help me to produce the project of bananas and change the gears. Instead of producing dominantly male producing bananas, my hope or my expectations actually is to start producing female bananas. And right now I'm gonna change snakes to actually see, look at that female and see how big she is and how beautiful she is for this season. Okay, and here we have my female banana. As a matter of fact, she's a banana black pastel enchi. Just like her father, I was lucky enough to actually produce the exact same snake with the same genes, but in the female version. And you can imagine how excited I am because this girl right here is actually gonna push up my banana combos even further than I actually have it right now with the benefit of actually producing more female bananas. Now, how is that possible? Now, remember we were talking about the sex links. Now, bananas and most commonly and that's most known out there are the male makers. Now, when we have a banana that's a male maker, everything that that banana actually produces, 96% or even 99% of the clutch that contains a banana gene will be males. And everything that it does not carry the banana gene will turn out females. Now, I hit that 1% or that 6% of actually being able to produce a female banana. Like I said, I actually went through 70 different clutches that contained the banana genes. And um, only this season when was I actually able to hit a second banana female. 
but this one right here, she's at breeding size and um, she's actually around 2,700 grams. I weighed her yesterday and um, she was about 2,649. So she's actually reaching um, the 2,700. But I held her back specifically because there was a double recessive visual um, clown that I wanted to actually put with this female. And um, I wanted to take care of the benefits or take advantage of the benefits of it basically having a, a recessive gene in her and her producing a male and female bananas. Now that's the thing about the female bananas. They do have the capability of producing both sex that are bananas. She can produce the banana male and the banana female. But the thing is the banana male that comes from this female will be known as a female maker. In other words, every um, clutch that the banana female maker male makes, 96% or at least 99% of the offsprings that does contain the banana genes will be females. And that's even more valuable to me in my collection because remember what I'm trying to do is basically make incredible combos. And if I can make visual recessive genes with bananas, especially females, it's going to be one of those definite holdbacks that I have to have in my collection. And um, ugh, just to give you an idea how huge this girl is, like I said, she's basically pushing 2,700 grams and I am in love with this female. This to produce this girl took me basically so many, so many um, seasons and so many breedings to actually produce her and get up to this weight that now this is the first one I'm so excited to actually work her out with. Well, anyway, this is what I have in my collection. Um, before I actually sign out, I want to give a huge shout out to Rob Barclow. He actually uploaded a recent video talking about how to jumpstart your breeding season. He gave some incredible tips that me personally, I'm going to take advantage of because I actually saw and it made a lot of sense the points it was making. I'm going to put the link to uh, the description, the, the link of his channel in my description so you can actually hop over and check it out. Um, and besides that, I also wanted to know, um, say um, I'm fortunate enough this weekend that I, I am fortunate enough this weekend to be able to go over to Tinley Park on um, the Reptile Expo that they're having over there this Saturday and this Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And I want to take full advantage of actually going down there. So if by chance I get to see um, any of you over there, <laughs> I would love to say hi. Please say hi back to me also. And I expect to actually upload some incredible content and some beautiful display for so many great breeders and have that much um, material to actually show um, for everyone here that's on my channel. Anyway, again, thank you very much. And if you're new to the channel, um, take the time and hit the subscribe. Um, like I said, um, I've said this so many times, um, this is an incredible hobby and there's incredible people incredible people that you meet within the hobby and producing animals is what it's all about. Anyway, thank you again very much guys and I'll see you in the next video.